you ever been in a parking lot, either tailgating with friends or just passing the time, and you're looking for shade, yet there's not a single building or tree to break up the desolate landscape? It's something that annoyed me, and I wanted to try to solve it by attaching something to my vehicle. The goals for this project were something that was easy to use and I had a quick setup time. An off-the-shelf solution is some rollout awnings. I thought I could just attach it to the side of my pickup truck and have it pitch up and away from the vehicle. The setup time, though, isn't very friendly as it requires legs and tie-down wires to keep it stiff. Another type were these batwing style awnings. These look cool as they could be set up without any additional supports. The drawback here is that they need to be horizontal, so in order for it to clear your head, they need to be mounted above the roof line. This is usually done with a roof rack or ladder rack, but I didn't have either of those and I didn't really want one, so I thought to myself, why couldn't I just make a lift for it? As all great ideas usually start, I thought this was going to be a quick, simple weekend project. I used Unistrut and long threaded rods to make the lifting mechanism. While it was quick, the end result didn't inspire much confidence. I scrapped that idea and went on to a revision too. Instead of building the lifting mechanism from scratch, these RV stabilizers can be used. They're similar to a spare tire jack, but what makes them work well is this cog mechanism that keeps it parallel as it lifts up. I figured I could use two of these, as more is always better, and two just seem to fit perfectly on a truck's pickup bed. Having two would also keep it from twisting while raised up. Here both lead screws are taped together to make sure there is no relative movement of the jacks as they go up. As that was pretty hard for me to visualize. The next step is to dismantle it and get the lead screw out of the jack. These were a little tricky to take apart as they were welded to these stoppers to keep them from slipping. But once they were removed, I was able to count the number of thread starts, the threads per inch, and the thread direction. Then we can go to McMaster and pick up a, a lead screw that is the length of two of the jacks, matching these exact same specs. Something needs to hold the lifts together while also holding it to the truck and the awning. So with this quick drawing, a local fabricator bent some metal into these U and J shapes. When I said having two lifts would fit perfectly, it turns out there wasn't much room for error. Some chicken scratch dimensioning showed me that I'd have little room while the lifts were collapsed. But with the dimensions called out, I can start drilling the upper and lower rails to define where the lifts are going to sit. This larger rail is the top, and it's a little tricky as it requires square holes to fit some carriage bolts. These carriage bolts are not just for aesthetics, but they also prevent the rubber seal on the flip cover from getting torn up. In order to make the square portion of the hole, I just kind of chewed away at it with a jigsaw. It wasn't the prettiest hole, but it was functional. With the holes made in the rails, the lift can be dry fitted. It's pretty satisfying to see it to start to come together. In order to mount it to the truck, the stake pocket holes are used. GM makes some drawings available on their website, and they list the stake pockets being a structural support for any accessories. The stake pockets also have a set of holes that go to the truck bed. These holes will be used to bolt the tubes down. Lining up the holes would be tricky, but if we use cage nuts, it allows some wiggle room while still letting it tighten up in the end. Finally, it's on a truck. There's a decent amount of wiggle, 
with most of this wiggle being from the beam twisting down its length right at the joints of the lips, which seems to be from the uprights of the rails flexing. To counter that a little, we'll weld in these plates which should act like gussets. Because the rails collapse into the channel though, the placement of the gussets are a little limited. Graduating from the drill, here's the lift operating with its own motor. The performance was a little anemic here, and this wasn't even with the awning loading it down. I wound up upsizing the motor three times its size, with an output power of about 100 watts. A speed of 220 RPM raises it up and down in about 20 seconds. Here are the first and last motors I went with, the motor of choice being the one on the top. On the end of it is a two-axis coupler to help align it to the lead screw. The motor needs to raise up and down with the lead screw while also pivoting to the lift arms as they change angle. To do this, the motor is attached to a small box which hugs the lift arm. And to make sure everything keeps alignment from this point forward, holes were drilled into the couplers, stops, and the shaft, and then roll pins were put in. So this ensures that even if the set screws from those devices loosen up, the roll pins will always have it kept in alignment. With all the mechanical nonsense finally situated and out of the way, all the parts then got powder coated, which were the lower and upper railings, as well as the rail tube on the opposite side of the truck. This way they all kind of matched the same color. Only thing left now is the final assembly. As the end was Getting closer, it of course started to rain on my parade, so I wound up taking this back inside the garage to finish it up. Part of the early revision that lived on with this was the Unistrut had these spacer washers, which are these quarter inch thick square pieces of metal. Because they're quarter inch thick, they're great for taking up large amounts of gap, and I wound up using two of these here to space the lift arms correctly. Any moving part on this assembly gets greased up. I was just using brake caliper grease because I figured it was high temperature and it would survive some of the harsh environment here. Of course I never tested it with those roll pins that I installed, and what I found here was the roll pin was actually sticking out slightly and it struck the lift arm when it was getting down too far. But that was an easily solvable problem with enough cutting power.
Here is the full lift assembly collapsed down and mounted to the truck. On the back of the awning casing, I had to create these extra holes so the studs from the carriage bolts would clear it. Nothing quite like destroying the thing that you just paid a lot of money for. Four of these holes in total get made to clear other hardware on the lift. This part of the awning is actually about an inch thick of aluminum channel, so there's quite a bit of gap here to uh, just remove some material. From the awning, you get these plates with these two studs each to mount it. They slide into the groove. I also picked a few bolts that also slide into the groove with the same bolt spec. So in total, I have eight studs that come off the back of the awning to hold it to the upper rail. To finish off the rear of the rail, I 3D printed this end cap so it kind of leaves the rail and swoops into the awning. To actually raise and lower it, it's hardwired into this switch panel that I put in the back of the truck. This compressor switch gets changed out with a up and down switch. I also don't feel like this would be a real project of mine unless I had some sort of LED lights on it. So under the awning, I also put these LED lights in there. But one problem that they could have is if any of the beams jiggled when the vehicle was moving, the button to turn them on could be hit. So I also 3D printed these little stoppers that use a mounting feature to kind of like put a raised lip around the button. That's a game changer. That was my journey on making a rising awning for the back of my truck. The intro you saw was truncated during the rise of the awning, but for this stowing, I'm showing it in real time with no jump cuts to show you the real speed. Both the setup and teardown take about a minute and a half, which met my goal of having something quick and easy. This has been a hit with the friends for hanging out, and even on a few camping trips. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.